What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the vlog. Before we get started today, I do wanna let everybody know that we are on track to hit 10,000 subscribers before Christmas. That is fantastic. Now my original goal was to hit 5,000 before Christmas, but now the new goal is 10K. Can we do it? I think we can. If we do, we're gonna be giving away two grand prizes. Now originally, I was just gonna give away one grand prize, uh, that being a ceremony type setup. Uh, all of the details on that will be coming in next week's uh, Vlogmas, but uh, if we hit 10K, we're going to be giving away two. There have been some companies that have reached out to me wanting to sweeten the deal for you guys, so hopefully we can put together a prize pack that is really, really awesome. So, if you haven't done so already, I need you to subscribe. While you're subscribing, go ahead and hit the notification bell. That way you can be notified every time some new content is posted to the channel. On today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to get a little bit more out of your current system, whether that is a PA system, a small scale uh, PA system, or it be your DJ rig. Now I've gotten a lot of messages and a lot of emails, but surprisingly no phone calls, you guys are listening, uh, about how uh, to eliminate peaks and, and, and valleys and stuff like that in your sound. You want to improve the overall sound quality of your rig. Now I'm here to tell you that it's hard for me to troubleshoot what you have going on from such a far distance away, but I will be able to show you just how you can get a little bit more out of it and some proper gain staging along the way. So uh, let's set up just a uh, one side of a PA system and we'll go from there. Now a lot of you guys like me are mobile DJs and a lot of times we get a bad rap for putting out bad sound quality and it all starts with how you set your equipment up. Now most of us have a controller that has two XLR outputs and we use those outputs to go directly into our speakers with nothing in between. Now for most circumstances that's perfectly okay. What that allows you to do is get in and out of your venue efficiently and easy, uh, allowing for a 10 to 15 minute setup at most. Now in most circumstances that's totally fine. What that's going to allow you to do is get in and out of your venue fairly easy and fairly quick, allowing for a 15 to 30 minute setup time. Um, which which ultimately makes you more money because you're not there at the venue so long. But if you want to get the most out of your current sound system, you need to be following some practices that's going to allow you to maximize the sound output. That's where having something like an outboard mixer comes into play. Having a mixer adds a gain stage to your signal path, ultimately allowing you to create just a little bit more headroom when you send it to your speakers. And in our case, using a mixer with an aux in will allow you to do what's called having an aux fed sub. If you look at any pro audio rig, most of the time, they're going to have an aux fed sub signal. What that allows you to do is only send what you want or certain frequencies to the sub. It also allows you to control the subs independently from the main mix. Now having an Oxfed sub as a mobile DJ works out especially well because a lot of the times some of the music that we get isn't the best quality. You don't want to damage your speakers just because you played a bad audio file that your client gave you that might have been ripped off of YouTube or come from SoundCloud. I'm going to show you how to properly set up your sound system with a mixer in place keeping your levels in check and running your subs on an aux. Now for today's example, I'm going to be using my iPad as my input source for my music going into the Allen & Heath Z10FX. This is a great entry level mixer for most DJs. It gives you four mic pre's as well as some line in inserts in case you want to use other audio inputs. It also has built in effects and it goes straight to USB which you can use as a sound card. Now the good thing about this mixer as opposed to some of its other counterparts is it's got balanced XLR outputs as opposed to the standard quarter inch or TRS that you see on other mixers at this price point. I'm not saying that quarter inch can't be used, but balance is always best. Whenever you're shopping, try to find something that's got XLR outs. Now coming out of the speaker, we're going into the EKX 12P and 18P from Electro Voice. The 12P is a main cabinet, the 18P is a subwoofer only. What I like about this series is it's got built-in DSP as well as a crossover network in the speaker itself. Now what that allows you to do with the DSP, standing for digital sound or digital signal processing, it's got built-in presets that allow you to tailor the signal to the speaker itself. With the crossover network, it allows certain signals only to be reproduced from the speaker. 
The subs in particular are not designed to take a full range signal. So if you're sending everything that you can to the sub without crossing it over, you run the risk of damaging the speaker. If you run an active speaker, nowadays those uh, crossovers are generally already in place. There's nothing more for you to do. If you're running a passive rig, I highly recommend that you get an outboard processor or crossover to handle the signal path to your subs just so you don't blow your stuff up. To get things started, we need to monitor our signal coming into our mixer. Too high of input is going to give you not the energy that you want, and it's just going to lead to a flat dance floor more than likely, or just be flat all around. You're going to have your speakers cranked to the max, and it's still not going to be quite loud enough. But if it gets too high on the meter bridge, it's just going to be distorted and might clip your stuff, leading to potentially damaging your equipment, and that's the last thing that we want. So. To start things off, I would always take a look at your EQs. It's best to start with them flat up and down. Once you get your gain structure set properly, you can always go back in and adjust these to your taste. On this mixer in particular, we've got a high, a mid, and a low frequency with sweepable mids that give you an EQ curve that you're looking for. Now before we get started, I do want to point some things out on this mixer in particular. Uh, keep in mind that things may be a little bit different on the mixer of choice that you use, but on this one we've got on the right hand side our meter bridge. It gives us a left and a right. The meter bridge is always typically outlined with green, yellow or orange, and red LEDs. The green means you're pretty much in the safe zone, the orange or yellow means you're getting to the, uh, the danger zone, and the danger zone of course is the red. On the right hand side we've got our main mix volume we'll go ahead and turn that one down on the left hand side we've got our four mic pre's uh, you can tell because they've got your typical XLRs if the mic pre's are available I like to keep those open specifically for mics that way uh, we can leave those open and control our trim and gain from the top where I'm plugged into, where our music source is, is our, uh, our quarter inch or you know auxiliary ends, and that way you can control them via the ST1 and ST2. I guess that's stereo because it's left and right. It even has an RCA hookup there at the top. Start off to make sure everything is getting a good quality signal. We're going to start with everything down. We're going to start by adjusting first our main trim. I like to start it with it about halfway and then adjust our level down here at the bottom. If you want to look and see before you actually send it out to the mains with your main mix, you can look. There's a pre-fade button right here. You press that pre-fade, it's going to give you a pre-fade visual of what you're going to be sending out before you even turn the speakers on. We can go ahead and adjust that up and turn our level up and right now we're in a safe zone. What you don't want to see is this track really isn't even going to allow me to do it but you know right now we're still considered in the safe zone but once we start getting up towards the top level of these orange LEDs even into the red we need to back things way down so again I want to start with everything about halfway even with our main level about halfway if you leave it in the green chances are the energy isn't going to be as high so that's fine if you want low volume but if it goes up to the red things are going to be clipping and distorted we're going to get rid of that pre-fade listen. You see that the meter bridge goes back down and we're going to start turning things up with our main mix. So our main mix also has a setting for nominal or zero dB, which right now we're hitting on our meter bridge. If we want a little bit more energy, of course, we could always turn this up, but then you're maxed out there at the main mix level. I like to keep it at nominal and adjust the audio from the individual channel strips. So I'll give it a little bit of gain. And then I'll give our main level down here a little bit of gain. And we're exactly where I want to be. We're at the 0 dB fully lit up with the, uh, the first one or two LEDs in the orange or the yellow uh, flashing. So that means we're getting a perfectly good hot signal. Now once you have your gain structure set, you can go ahead and turn your main mix down and turn your speakers on. I like to turn the main mix down, that way there's not any weird pops or clicks when you power up your speakers. Once your speakers are powered, you can go through and adjust your crossover network built within your speaker. Now if you're using a passive cab, of course you're going to have to go through and do that on your outboard gear. The one thing that I like about the EV line of products is they've already got built-in crossovers tailored to all of the EV powered lines. So only thing I have to do is click a button on the EKX 12P to adjust to the EKX 18P and it's tailored to the speaker itself. There's no guesswork, they've already done that for you. 
Now once you have your speaker on, you can simply turn the levels up until you get to a comfortable listening position. Now if you're using only mains, you can stop right there. But the real magic happens is whenever you send signal to your aux sends, specifically to your subs. So you can have your main mix playing at a particular volume and you can pump signal specifically going to your subs. So right now I have signal only going to the subs and then I can bring in the mains whenever I need to. So if we go to the channel strip that our music is on right now, the aux signal is turned all the way down. I like to send it about halfway and then control the main mix from over here. We can come over here to our channel fader. We can turn it up even more. And then we can gain it back from here. This gives me independent, separate control of the subwoofers themselves. No subwoofers, all the woofers. None and over. And then when we're ready, we can add in the main mix. Now one thing that you do have to take into account, specifically on a mixer like this, is there's no way to set it pre-fade or post-fade, so you have to control it individually. So if you turn this channel strip down, the sub will still be up if you have it up which sometimes can be annoying, but if you find the right balance, it's really not all that bad. Now notice on the mic pre channels that I have the subs turned all the way down. Generally speaking, we don't like to put spoken word into our auxiliaries. There's just no need for it because the voice isn't gonna go down low enough to where you need the sub. And that's it for today's episode. It's a simple way to have full control and full capabilities over your PA. Having the subs on an aux simply allows you to increase the volume to your main cabinet while decreasing the volume or increasing to the subs. Using a crossover allowing the high frequency signal to be sent to the main while the low frequency signal being sent to the sub actually allows your speakers to work less. Putting less strain on your speakers means you can send more volume to them at once, increasing the overall volume. Essentially, you're taking a big load off of your main speaker and allowing it to spread over the entire system. What that allows you to do is get more gain or more overall volume to the entire PA. This is a really great tool to have, especially if you find that you're not getting as much out of your PA as you would like. So instead of upgrading your PA and spending thousands of dollars, you might as well try this first. If you're not getting what you would like out of your current PA, I would suggest try this first before going and investing in you know, a bigger or larger PA. It might be that your PA just needs a little gain structuring or reworking to make it suit your needs and provide a bigger sound. That's it for today's episode, guys. As you can see, I'm using my up lights as lights right now. We've been dealing with some really crazy rain and it's caused a few of my shop lights to go out and that means that it's not the best for filming. So if I look a little dark or the lighting looks a little off, I apologize. Hopefully by tomorrow, we'll have it all set up and ready to go. So once again, thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't done so already, hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time that we post something new to the channel. Also, if you wanna follow me on social media Instagram is the way to do it at DJ Woopig on Instagram and really for all social media networks that's where you can find me if you want to shoot me an email it's DJ Woopig at gmail.com also I do want to send a big shout out to one of my subscribers his wife owns a, uh, a boutique that does sublimation printing and vinyl printing and really cool stuff for marketing and she sent me out this t-shirt with my catchphrase on there also on the back it's got all of my social media things so if you would go and follow her on Instagram maybe shoot her a DM to get some swag of your own going through a local boutique company is probably going to be a lot cheaper than having to go through a company that you have to buy in bulk so if you just need a one-off clothing item I recommend that you shop local or small boutiques like hers anyway that's it for today's video if you've got any questions comments or concerns leave them down in the comment section and we'll see you next time